All right, folks, so we will be doing a deep dive here on what's currently going on. We're going to be looking at the trends here, and you've always got to look at the aggregate data. Um, I try not to do too many videos on single polls. I know I've done a couple of them, but the truth is, is that single polls are never, you know, indicative of what's going on. You always want to look at the RCP average where you look at uh, sort of the aggregate numbers of all the polling data because that's, you know, it gives you the averages, obviously. So you need to actually see the trend numbers instead of just, uh, you know, one poll. So this is important. We're going to be looking at this to see what's going on because there's some really interesting stuff where specifically the most alarming thing that's, well, it's a good thing, actually. The most shocking thing, I should say, is I did not realize how hard Kamala Harris's campaign is just completely uh, in the water. I can't believe it. It's completely gone. She is no longer a top-tier candidate. Not even close. Looking at these RCP numbers, I was shocked because I seriously did not realize how bad it has gotten for Kamala Harris. It's really, really, really bad, folks. Now, uh, before we jump into this, I have to let you guys know that I'm over on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the progressive voice. If you want to go access premium content, make sure to go check it out. I actually just posted a video, uh, you know, asking the question, what will Nico House, the Tulsi Gabbard uh, defender, lunatic, of course, what will he do after Tulsi Gabbard inevitably drops out? Uh, I got some Dave Rubin, Ben Shapiro videos, some more Nico House stuff, Sam Harris, David Pakman, etc., etc. If you want to check out all that good stuff, that's patreon.com slash the progressive voice. Make sure to go check that out if you want to get access to premium content. Anyways, with that said, let's jump back into uh, the data here. So, let's look at a couple of things. There's a lot of things I want to hit on here. So, as you can see right here, Bernie was doing pretty darn well up in the 20s. As you can see, Biden was in the 30s is before he even launched. And I believe this was essentially where he... I believe this is where he launched his campaign, okay? It was right here. So, what you're looking at is Biden went all the way up to a 41.4... And you go, hey, well, wh who's losing numbers? As you can obviously see on the screen, Bernie lost a ton of support, and all of that went to Biden. He went from 23 to 29, all the way down to 14.6 to 41.4. That was right when he announced. And everybody was talking about, oh, my God, it's over. Biden's going to win. Uh, you know, all of this is running off of name recognition. Now, of course, he's nowhere near his 41.4 at this point. It's almost halved, honestly. It's pretty close. And as you can see, you know, his numbers kept going down and down. And, you know, uh, this went down and they took a little bit longer, went down. This, I believe, was around the uh, second, I believe it was the first, I think it was the first debate, actually. I forget exactly. But if you guys remember, Kamala Harris really did a number on Joe Biden. Because Joe Biden really wasn't prepared and Kamala really hit him on the busing issue. Um, and really, it really landed with a lot of people. <laughs> As you can see, Biden's number straight up fell off a cliff from 30, uh, you know, from 32 here. Um, all the way down to 27.2 and down here to 26.0. So he took a massive hit right here. And as you can see, sort of at the same time, Kamala Harris uh, here started rising heavily. And as Biden dropped off, as you can see here, uh, Harris took the numbers. And that's because, of course, she was essentially his rival, his main opponent uh, in that debate. That was her target was uh, Joe Biden. So you can basically uh, look at these numbers and go, OK, in that debate, it. It, it resulted in Biden taking a massive hit and Kamala really going up. Now, what you can see is Biden was slowly climbing. He got up to a peak of like 32 here. And I think this was around the second debate, if I'm not mistaken, where he sort of started to go up a little bit. He kind of held his own in the second debate. Uh, Kamala Harris was kind of flustered and wasn't really able to answer many questions either. So that didn't really work well for her. And so as a result of that debate, you know, Biden started to go up. Kamala Harris started to go down. So the supporters, I guess what happened here, what it looks like to me is, the people who went from Biden to Kamala after that one debate basically saw the second debate and were like, eh, we're going to go back to Biden. <laughs> That's what it looks like happened. But dude, if you look at these numbers now, folks, this is freaking insane. This is September 18th. This was yesterday, okay? Kamala Harris is at 5.7%. Pete Buttigieg is at 5.8. Now, what you have to understand about Buttigieg is his campaign is entirely fake. It's entirely synthetic. 
Uh, it's totally fake. It's propped up by the mainstream media. Nobody actually supports the guy. Uh, he was lobbying for superdelegates, of course, because he can't, you know, get the support of regular people. So he has to get the superdelegates to override the vote of the people, of course. Um, he that has no, like, l organic support. It's all fake from the mainstream media pushing him on us, essentially. He is higher than Kamala Harris. I can't believe my eyes when I saw this. Look, folks, Kamala Harris is not a top-tier candidate anymore. This is definitive. There's no argument whatsoever. Not, folks, not only is she not in double digits, she's almost in half. She's almost at five points, which is half of being in the beginning of double digits. She's not even close to double digits. She's at 5.7, and she's no longer the fourth candidate in terms of, uh, you know, numbers, in terms of percentage points. So, and you can see this insane decline here where everyone went back to Biden after that debate performance. I mean, just look at this, dude. This is insane. I can't believe this, folks. This is like, I'm assuming in the Kamala Harris campaign right now, I don't know I, I don't know if DEFCON 5 is the worst or DEFCON 1 is the worst. I'm going to say DEFCON 1 is the worst. I think that's panic mode. Uh, I think the sirens and the sort of alarm bells for DEFCON, uh, DEFCON 1 are going off right now uh, because they're really in trouble. You know, this is insane. This is like... This is horrifying. I don't think that she can win. It's horrifying for them, not for me. I don't like Kamala Harris, obviously. So this is really terrible for them. And a lot of people are starting to ask, like, hey, is she going to drop out? Because this is embarrassing at this point. Seriously, this is embarrassing, folks. You're below Pete Buttigieg, who in whose entire campaign is fake. You're, uh, what, like 2.7 points off of O'Rourke? Dude, Yang is at 3 points. You're at 5.7 Yang is at three points. Yang, that's really good for a rando like him. That's insane, insanely good for a rando like him. You, who everyone can't stop talking about because the mainstream media propped you up, you're at 5.7. Oof, that is bad. Whew. That is absolutely terrible, man. This is absolutely insane. Now, another crazy thing to look at here, and again, I can't stress to you enough how crazy that is that Kamala... And there, by the way... In the previous video I did about, Kam or about uh, Kamala Harris losing to Yang in that specific poll in California, uh, I showed you a video clip of someone asking her whether or not she's a top chicken. She looked really awkward. It was really cringy. But I think deep down inside, she's like, man. Like, dude, here's the thing. It's not debatable as to whether you're a top tier candidate anymore. You're not. That's it, point blank. There's three top tier candidates now. Biden, Warren, and Bernie. That's it. You ain't in it. You're not even four anymore. You're not even four. You're not in double digits. You're a little over halfway to being at double digits. You're not a top tier candidate, point blank. That's it. No debate whatsoever. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You're just simply not. Uh, you're not a top tier candidate. Now, <clears throat> what's crazy here is that Warren seems to have passed up Bernie, which is a little crazy. I did not see this coming. I certainly never, for I could never foresee Warren performing this well. Like, when she announced her campaign, I did not think she was going to do this well, especially because... She kept doing blunder after blunder, which is like, what are you doing? Like, you're embarrassing yourself. The whole Native American fiasco, that was really, you know, bad. Just kind of like, you know, I didn't think that she was going to do this well. But it's pretty insane that she's managed to get up to 18.3 while Bernie's at 16.5. Now, which you, now I know what your reaction is like, whoa, we got to defeat Warren. What are we going to do as Bernie supporters? There's a problem with that. And the problem with that is that's not really how it works. And I just did a video uh, talking about Emma Vigland, who went and interviewed a bunch of Warren supporters, asking, hey, you know, Warren and Bernie are the two most progressive candidates. Why'd you choose Warren over Bernie, just out of curiosity? And you could tell that all of them are neoliberal Hillary supporters. That's what you could tell. <laughs> so this is the thing. Bernie and Warren have no crossover. You're not going to be able to convince Warren voters to vote for Bernie Sanders they are the spawn of Hillary Clinton, Kamala Harris, etc., etc. They don't share a voting base, folks. The Warren supporters are extreme. They're white as a snowball. They are, uh, you know, not diverse at all. They're very elite. Okay, there's not many poor people who are who are supporting her. They're people with postgraduate degrees, well off, middle upper class, middle to middle upper class people. You know, those kinds of people, you know, the liberals who make like 200, like 100, 150, 200K a year and are, you know, uh, I'm with her, you know, people, those kinds of people, you know. Uh, Bernie, on the other hand, has a lot of a lot of poor people who support his campaign. He's got a very diverse, uh, you know, uh, you know, voting base. He's 
per, I believe he's polling that he, he's the best candidate with Latinos, is my understanding as well. So he's got a pretty diverse uh, voting base. Complete opposite. You know, he's leading with people without any college degrees. So he's complete opposite. So my answer to you is that I understand your reaction to that, but it's like that's not going to happen. Like there's no way to convince Warren supporters to vote for Bernie. It's just not going to happen. It doesn't make any sense. So, you know, what? I mean, what do we do in that situation? I, mean, I don't know, but what I can tell you is that you're not going to be able to convince Warren supporters. Now the thing is a lot can change, and I suspect it probably will with Warren. I think that Warren's going to find a way to flop. I mean, remember, you got to remember it's September. When is the first... I believe the first primary is actually held in February, so there's a long time until then. But what you need to understand is that Warren can fall off, but it's not something where it's like, yo, we need to convince Warren's where we need to put our foot down. What is that going to do, bro? Like, they're not... Like, you think the PhD graduates um, and the Hillary supporters are going to support Bernie? Hell no, they're not. Of course not. Of course they're not. So it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Now, also, what's inter what I found interesting was that Bernie had, uh, you know... Oh, and to add to that, folks, sorry about that. Uh, I also want to mention that if you've seen the polling data uh, and the second choices, the main second choice, the I believe the plurality of the second choice for Warren actually goes to Kamala. It doesn't go to Bernie. Um, and then for Bernie, weird enough, his second choice goes to Biden, which is super weird. And I guess that that's why you see here that Biden ate into Bernie's support here. Because uh, as you guys can see, they're really close. And then, boom, he announces election and everything changes. So, it's just super weird how the two most progressive candidates are not, you know, the voters one and two. That's not how it is at all. None of this makes sense. What I have to tell you is a lot of these polls are fake. Now, what do I mean by fake? Do I mean that they're fake news or something? They're making stuff up? That's not what I mean. What I mean is a lot of these people are not educated on politics. They're not paying attention. Um, and they're just going based off of name recognition. you got to remember, guys... We're in a bubble. We're like really political junkies. You know, we pay attention to it on a daily basis to an unhealthy degree. Uh, most people don't really care. You know, they barely pay attention a little bit. Uh, and so when you hear Biden, Obama was the previous Democratic president. He's really pop. I don't know what his approval rating with Democrats is. I'm pretty sure it's pretty high. Uh, you know, Democrats love him. Uh, people miss him a lot because we have a president who can't form, uh, you know, basic sentences, which ironically, Bur Biden would be the same thing. <laughs> But as we know, Obama didn't want Biden to run. But, you know, with all those combining factors, you just kind of see that, uh, you know, just Biden would uh, be in a good position right now because of name recognition. So when you look at these polls, just think of them as like, OK, this is some kind of BS stuff here. It's like, is he really doing this well or is it just because he's getting name recognition right now? Or is this going to look very, very different seven months from now? You know, it's going to look very, very different. So, uh, key takeaways, uh, Kamala Harris's campaign is completely done. <laughs> it's completely crashed. It's totally in the water at this point. Uh, you know, Bernie's campaign took a massive hit when Biden announced the second choice for Bernie voters is Biden, the plurality. Same thing goes for a plurality of Warren voters. Their second choice is Kamala Harris. Uh, Kamala Harris benefited by taking some of Biden supporters. Then she has completely gone down after the second debate. Uh, in which Biden took back his supporters. Warren has also taken some supporters from Kamala Harris. So, and Ka and most important thing, I guess, you need to know, oh, Warren is, you know, leading against Sanders, which is something that's, you know, very interesting. Um, but yeah, that's the situation, man. Those are the different things. So let me know your thoughts down below. Very curious to hear them.